Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Jen. And welcome to DIY Project Party. Today we're going to show you how to build Harry Potter interactive wands for your next Harry Potter themed party. So if you like these types of projects, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll, de I'll start deep diving into more of these components, what worked, what didn't, as I was experimenting in these next few videos. So Jen wanted to throw a Harry Potter yes. themed party. And Ben wanted to do some cool tech project to add that hashtag extra factor. <laughs> so what I wanted to do is create something really cool, similar to what they have at the theme parks. What I wanted to have is 3D printed wands for our guests, and I wanted them to move them around and cast the, the Lumos spell to turn a light on and the Nox spell to turn the light off. And I also wanted an Aguamenti spell for them to turn on a phone for a certain period of time. Yeah. So before we get into the details of the project, step one, grab yourself a butterbeer. All right, so step two, grab your Raspberry Pi 3 and install the latest version of Raspbian. And at the time that we did this video, it was Stretch. All right, step three, once you get Raspbian installed, uh, install Python 3, OpenCV for motion tracking, and also PyGPIO, which will be able to control the GPIO pins on your, uh, your Raspberry Pi. All of these uh, websites are going to be in the comments below under each step, so don't worry about those. Just look in the comments below. All right, step four. Another person wrote all of the, the Python code, so what I did is I navigated to his GitHub re repository, I forked his code, and then what? I, I forked his code. What does forking mean? Well, Do I'm, I want to know? Uh, it's not <laughs> as dirty as it sounds. Okay. So forking uh, is just a, a fancy term for copying his code. Okay. Uh, over it. to my account. Got and it. then I updated his code uh, for Python 3, and then uh, I put it onto my GitHub account so that you guys can download it later. The other person who originated, uh, who originally wrote the code, what he did is he had his Raspberry Pi interact with an Arduino. I didn't use an Arduino in this project. I've never heard of that, so great. <laughs> I'll show you later. Okay. Step five. Uh, what I did is I bought a, uh, a Raspberry Pi compatible webcam. So plug that into your Raspberry Pi because we're gonna use that for the motion tracking. Uh, and that's how it's gonna detect how the, the wand is moving around. So step six, I use 18 IR LEDs uh, to create a light bar or a light ring around the webcam. And what I did is I used the IR light to, uh, to reflect off the wands instead of uh, visible light. So the IR uh, is like what you have in your remotes on yep. your, your TV, so you can't mm -hmm. really see the light uh, with your eye. Uh, cameras and other type of, types of devices, like the webcam, can pick up the light. Right. So you may not have to use 18 LEDs. Uh, I just knew that people were gonna be casting these spells at a distance, so I just wanted to blast this light all over people. Blast it all over everyone. <laughs> I, just wanted, I just wanted to shine this light all over people so that I knew that I had enough reflectance uh, back into the webcam. So I wired up six groups of LEDs and I powered them with a five volt, uh, two amp power supply. And each group of three LEDs were wired in series with a 50 ohm resistor. I had designed the LED light ring in SolidWorks and I made it specifically fit my Logitech webcam. And then I printed it out using my 3D printer. Step seven, what I did is I found some old exposed film negatives because I wanted to create an IR filter for the webcam. If the webcam doesn't have an IR filter on it, it starts tracking everything that it sees. Yeah. So what I wanted to do is filter out that visible light and I just wanted to catch the reflection of the infrared light that was coming off the end of the wand. So after I printed out the uh, 3D printed out the LED light ring and uh, assembled all the LEDs inside of it, I hot glued it to the webcam uh, with the uh, the film behind it for the IR filter, and then we have a bookcase in our room. Mm -hmm. And what we did to hide all the wires is we 
uh, ran them all behind the bookcase, and we hot glued everything together so it would stay in place on the bookshelf. Right. So for step eight, I actually found a lantern at Home Goods um, with a battery-operated LED candle inside of it. So we wanted to use that for the Lumos and the Knox, the turning on and off of the light. Um, just thought that would be a really cool added feature, you know. Because it looked very Harry Potter. -ish. In theme, everything has to it, be themed with me, so mm -hmm. it very much fit the theme. Um, and then for the Aguamenti spell, the water feature that we wanted to turn on, we found a really inexpensive fountain on Amazon. They're both battery powered and yep. they're both powered by the same amount of batteries, which really yes. helped. Mm -hmm. So I was able to use a 3.3 pow uh, volt power uh, supply so that I can run them off wall power so we didn't have to eat up batteries through the yeah. entire party. Mm -hmm. So the Raspberry Pi does have a 3.3 volt output, uh, but I was, a little, uh, I was a little worried by how many amps it would draw mm -hmm. and I didn't want to short out my Raspberry Pi. So what I did is I used a relay uh, to turn on and off uh, both the, the lantern and the, the water fountain. And then I connected those relays uh, to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. And then I used the Pi GPIO program in order to turn uh, both the, the lantern and the uh, water fountain on and off when the specific spell was uh, done by our guests. Right. Step nine, wands. My original thought was based on something that I found on BuzzFeed that was very simple and just buying dowels and just crafting them ourselves. Well, then Ben here came up with the excellent idea of 3D printing them. At first, we were just going to 3D print one prototype for everyone to step up and try at the party. And mind you, we had about, you know, 30 to 40 people possibly attending this party. And 37. I, 37 people came to this party. And I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea if we 3D printed wands for everyone to take home? So Ben here, through a lot of trial and error, set it up to print throughout the day because each one of these wands consists of two separate pieces that you print and each piece took about an hour to print. To print. So yep. 37 times two, <laughs> it's a lot of hours that were spent. Plus and all the failed Plus print. all the failed prints, which we can include some of those uh, pictures for y'all to check out. But. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, upload these uh, files to Thingiverse so you can download them and use Thingiverse, them. that's Th a real thing? Thingiverse, okay. yep. Sure. Real thing. So you can download these for your own party. And uh, I, I looked around online to, uh, to find models uh, for these wands and nothing really fit what we wanted to do because they were uh, either too tall for my 3D printer or they didn't come to the right diameter at the tip here. Because what we wanted to do is use this reflective material uh, and just uh, hole punch uh, a piece out of it and just mm -hmm. stick it on to the end of the wand. Right. And this really uh, saved us from actually physically cutting out little circles for all, all of the wands. Yeah. It was basically reflective tape that we found in the camping section at Walmart. So yep. little strips that you put on your jacket for safety. So you can also um, be as skilled and talented as my friend, shout out to Gillian Sloan, who did craft her own wand and probably drunkenly or maybe on purpose left it here for us. But... This wand, and I'll try to like get up close so you guys can see that here, um, was made from a dowel and then she did hot glue little pieces to look like Professor McGonagall's wand because she came as Professor McGonagall and then shaped it down and even sanded down the tip here uh, to look more shaped like an actual wand. And then when she arrived at the party, Ben actually had plenty of those reflector circles uh, handy and was able to put one on her wand so she could use her very own wand to also participate in the interactive spells, which worked, was really cool. It worked out great. I did. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Step 10, parcel tongue, Python code. Really, it's just Python code, but, you know, if for those true Harry <laughs> Potter fans out there, you know what I'm talking about. So now what you need to do is log into your Raspberry Pi, run the parcel tongue or <laughs> Python code, and then uh, stand back and then start practicing. Uh, Let your the magic happen. Let the magic happen. And then invite your friends over and throw a big party. Yeah. Okay, so there you guys have it. Uh, those are the initial steps to get you well on your way to planning an awesome, magical Harry Potter party experience with the hashtag extra technology elements. 
And if you like this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button below. And what we'll do is we'll dedicate the next couple of these videos to uh, showing you a little bit more detail about some of these components because they're a little tricky to set up. Yeah, um, so I, I think that's it. I think that's it. The only thing left to do is put on our special glasses and apparate out of here. My drink's gonna be like... <laughs> We're gonna have to keep filling. Yours, yours is gonna go up and down. Well, where's the cream soda? Wait, well, it's like a refill spell in Harry Potter world. Lament tea? That's for water. I don't know. This isn't water. This is a lot better. Uh, Accio Blackout. <laughs> Courtesy of Gillian Sloan. <laughs> <laughs>